Hi, my name is Jimmy Nix. I'd like you to come along with me. We're at beautiful Lake of the Pines in East Texas. Pine trees, dogwoods, a lot of wildlife. I'll tell you something else too, this is bass country. We're gonna be fishing out of Willow Point Marina. We're gonna be fishing in the upper part of Lake of the Pines. A lot of cover, a lot of bass. I'll tell you something about this. A lot of the pleasure that I drive out of bass fishing with a fly rod is being able to tie my own flies. I'd like to teach you to fish and tie some of these flies because I know how hard it was when I first started learning, get material on learning to tie bass flies. i tell you what, I've tied on a little bass bug. A little bass bug with rubber legs. There's an awful lot of pockets between my boat and that big stump over there. All kind of duckweed, all kind of cover in here. And these fish really ought to be thick in there. Let's see if they want to eat this bass bug. One of the important things is to be able to accurately cast that bug in those pockets. Just bounce it over and then let it slowly fish in that pocket. Let it sit there for a while. Just let it sit motionless and then give it a little strip, just a little one. Let it sit there and sit there and just a little strip. Sometimes you can get more action with a bass bug letting it sit than working it. Okay, let's pick that fly up. He's not very big, but we'll warm up on a little one. Let me slip down there and let him grow up. There you go, little fella. You know, now that I've taught you how to fish this bass bug, why don't you come into my fly tying room? I'd like to also teach you to tie it. Let's go. This is the deer hair bass bug. We're going to tie this fly on a 3366 mustad. You can also use a 37189. Our tail is going to be hackle off of a neck. We want to use wide webby hackle. Our skirt, we're going to palmer out of the same material. Our body is done completely out of deer hair. We have natural deer hair, a black deer hair, and white deer fur for the face. We use white for the face almost on all colors because you're fishing this fly to you and you want to be sure and be able to see it. And the white is what you see. We're going to put rubber hackle in here for the legs. This is a standard bass fly. This fly is popularized by Dave Whitlock and Billy Munn. We owe a lot to them for doing this. Let's use a flat waxed single strand nylon floss to put our weed guard on. We'll lay a base of thread one third down the hook bend and back up to the point on the hook shank that's opposite the point of the hook. We'll use 20 pound hard mason and we'll just capture the end of that, take two or three wraps, then we'll grab the monofilament, lift up on it and tie back. This way it'll ride itself under thread pressure right on top of the hook shank. And we'll come back to the tie in point. Okay, I'll tie it off here with a whip finish. We'll change thread, either 6 odd or 3 odd. For this fly we'll use black because we're going to use grizzly feather for the tail. This is an awfully good bass fly neck. It's wide webby hackles and the stems are not too stiff. We'll just choose six of these and I don't worry about choosing them off this side because I can get them to flare out just by tying them on there correctly. 
We'll lay these feathers on our leg where the curve is down. I'll put them in two stacks and we'll have three in each stack. I'll bring one stack up and it's curved down. I'll turn it over and measure it on the other side. And I'll grasp all six of them. Now I've got the curve to each side. We'll measure them about one and a half to two times the hook shank length. We'll just come in here and clip those stems right off. Now we're not going to strip the barbs off of this feather because that'll make it twist when we tie it in. Advance your thread about an eighth of an inch. Now where we made our cut, just take a couple of wraps right around that stem and pull it up. We'll pull all six of them up at one time. Just pull it up and as we pull it up we're going to wrap the thread back. And what this will do is it'll, it'll, it'll write these right on top, real nice on top of the hook shank. And just cover your, your stems of your hackle with thread. Now we'll take and we'll pull each three to each side. That way they'll splay out nicely. And just work them with your hands. Don't be afraid to pull on those feathers. If you don't like the way they are, just twist them and pull and get them where you want them. There's not one reel that says they have to be on there exactly like they, they're supposed to the first time. Let me show you these feathers. You got a nice splay tail now. You got three on each side and they'll kick in the water like this. Let's put it back in the vise and we'll put our skirt on. We'll select two more feathers for the skirt okay for the skirt we want to hackle these where the feather starts to bend now in this feather there'll be a stiff portion right down here and it doesn't hackle very well so right where it bends we'll snip that off right there Okay, instead of stripping, I'm going to come in there and going to snip those barbs off. We'll tie them in on the side. Okay, now we'll hackle forward. Let's put a little flex cement right there on that thread wrap. You can either use hackle pliers or you can do it in your hand. Just, we'll just hackle forward and every time you hackle forward just pull back the previous hackle. Just grab the tips of that hackle. And just brush it back. Okay, it gets in the right position. Hold it with the right hand. We'll tie it off with our left hand. Pull back just a little. Put a few thread wraps right there. We'll trim off that tip. And I'm going to take either a six aught or three aught, and I'm going to tie it off right here with a whip finish. Because we got to get some thread on there that we can spin hair with. But first, I want to show you a little trick. First thing we want to do is we want to get this little collar out of the way. Because all we do when we trim that hair, it really gets in our way. So take your 6 aught thread, grab the end of it. Also, come in here and grab the end of that hackle that you've tied for the skirt. Take about three or four wraps around that and right around here we'll do a whip finish and we'll get all this stuff out of our way and just trim it. Don't worry about that thread because we're going to come back later, trim it off and let that skirt flare back out. 
Let's put a jam knot on with the thread that we can spin deer hair with. I use rod wrapping thread. It's a size A thread and it keeps the same consistency as you spin the hair. You can also use size A monocord. We want to use a deer hair that kind of has a spongy feel. This way it'll spin real well. It's not really hollow. Everybody says you want hollow hair, but the hair itself is not hollow. It just has air spaces in it. This is enab enables the hair to float. So what we'll do, we'll come up here and we'll trim the butts of the hair and trim the points completely off. We'll advance our thread about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. We'll cant our deer hair back and we're going to put it on the near side of the hook. Take two loose wraps around the deer hair. As we pull down on the thread, we want to release the deer hair a little bit at a time. So here goes. Let's learn how to spin deer hair. Take another wrap through the hair, grasp it right over here, tighten. Pull back on the deer hair, wrap right in front of it. Take our hair packer and just push back. Be sure and support the back of the deer hair as you pack. Advance the thread. Let's put one more clump of deer hair on there. The same size. And this time we'll also trim the butts and the tips off. Can it on the near side, take two loose wraps around, pull down and release the hair. Just let it spin right around that hook shank. Take a couple of wraps in front and pack that hair. Okay, right now we're going to put a rubber hackle on there. This rubber hackle comes all connected together and you just peel off what you want one at a time. We'll just tie an overhand knot with the rubber hackle right around the hook shank. Tighten it, pull it back, and take a couple of wraps. Just kind of X around the hook shank, under the hook shank, and around the other rubber hackle. Pull back, take a wrap of thread in front of the rubber hackle, take your fingernail and just push it right back in there. Now grab the rubber hackle on the far side and pull it back into deer hair all the way around to the near side. Take the near side rubber hackle, pull it back through the deer hair all the way on the far side. Advance your thread and let's put another clump of deer hair on there. Again, we'll clean out the under fur. When you work with deer hair, you don't want to handle it very much. You want to grasp it where about half of the deer hair that you're going to spin on the hook shank sticks out from your thumb and your forefinger. That way you'll just trim the butts off and then you come inside and snip the tips off. That way when you lay this on the hook shank you have half of the deer hair sticking out and so you can see what you're doing with the thread. Again, two wraps around, pull straight down and release the hair. Take one more wrap and then a wrap in front. Take your hair packer and we'll pack it again. Take a couple of wraps in front. Sometimes it's real nice just to take your bobbin, bring your thread all the way up close to the hook shank, and just come right around there. That way you don't capture any hair. Again, we'll put another rubber hackle on there, an overhand knot right around the hook shank. Same procedure. We'll bring the thread over the rubber hackle and just kind of capture it around the hook shank and then take one wrap of thread in front of the hackle, push it back in there and again the near side will go to the far side, the far side will come to the near side. All this doing is just, just keeping that rubber hackle out of your way. Advance your thread, two or three wraps put another clump of deer hair on there. What we want to do now is just go about two-thirds of the way up 
with natural colored deer hair. And then we'll put a, some black hair in there and then we'll put a face of white hair. Two wraps around, pull straight down and let it spin. Pull back, take a couple of wraps. Okay, pack it. Sometimes when you take your, your, your packer, just bring it in here and twist it and that really flattens that deer hair out nice. Wrap in front. Again, advance your thread. Okay, right now we're going to take some black deer hair. And this is just for looks. And you can tie bass flies in any color you want to. I like this natural bass fly. It's natural colors. Natural deer hair, black and white face. Again, we'll trim it off. We'll set it on here, a little cannon position, two loose wraps, pull straight down, let it pull right around the hook shank. Wrap in front, and we'll pack. Advance our thread. Let's put one more little clump of black hair on there, about half the size we did on the other one. Again, clean it out. Trim off our butts and our tips. And we'll can it in there on the near side. Take two loose wraps around it and spin that hair right around that hook shank. Pack it back. Take a couple of wraps in front and advance that thread. Okay, we're going to tie our face out of white. No matter what color I use, I usually use white or some light colored deer hair on the front because this is the part you see when you're fishing it towards you. Clean out the under fuzz again. Just grasp it one time with half of the hair sticking out between your thumb and forefinger. Trim it off. Lay it in there in a cannon position. Bring it down, pull straight down, let it spin right around the hook shank. And we'll pack it back. Okay, we don't want to leave enough room for our head and monofilament weed guard to be tied off. So let's check it. Be sure we've got a nice white face, you bet. Put it back in the vise. Okay, now let's tie off this rod wrapping thread right now. Pull back, do a whip finish. Let's take the fly out of the vise and let me show you how to trim it. First thing we want to do is hold it upside down. Grab all the little rubber hackles and just kind of twist them together. Grasp the top of the fly by the deer hair. Take our razor blade and we'll want a perpendicular cut right on the bottom. This will be our flat cut. This will be our reference cut. And it's got to be perpendicular to the hook bend. Okay. And you want to get it deep enough where you've got a good gap between the hair and the hook point, but you don't want to get it so close to the hook that you cut the thread. Okay, after we get that nice flat cut. Let me show you how that is. Got a nice flat cut. Now that's our first reference point. Our second reference point, we're going to take our curved scissors. And we're going to mark this. We want this bug to be symmetrical. 
So we'll come in here with our scissors and we'll just snip the width that we want. We'll come over here the same width and we'll snip right over here. And that way we got the same side. Now we're just going to cut in a curved direction right back to where our skirt was tied on. Okay, and we'll turn it over and we'll also do it on this side. And we'll keep that curve about the same. And we're going to turn that bug over and we're going to have let it face us. We're going to bring our scissors right in here and on each side we'll cut the face. Now this will enable us to trim this bass fly and have nice symmetry. Okay, we got our three reference points. We got our flat bottom. On each side we've got a nice symmetrical cut. Now you can pull the rubber down on each side. Always keep the rubber away from the hair that you want to trim. Just kind of twist it up. Okay, now with our scissors, we'll just go back. Same shape that we did when we started on the bottom. And we'll do that with scissors. And then we'll finish up with our razor blade. Okay, now remember, when we're cutting these flies, trimming these bugs, you don't want to cut too much off because it's very hard to put that hair back on. <sighs> Blow excess hair off and we'll come around with a razor blade and we'll trim this flat. The razor blade will take all those little rough edges out of here. And let me grasp that rubber band right there and twist it around a little bit, get it out of the way. Take a couple of rough edges off. Bring our scissors in here right next to the skirt. Just bring it up under here and cut that off. Where we have any stragglies there. And we'll fine tune it with a razor blade. You know, you can work on these just like a sculpture, I guess, forever. Better quit cutting on it, I won't have anything left. We'll pull the rubber hackle up and be sure they're all even. Okay, in the back two, I'm going to cut a little bit shorter, just about an eighth of an inch shorter than the front two legs. Okay, I'm going to take my razor blade and I'm going to come right in here and I'm just going to cut this thread just twack, just like that. And just like magic, that hackle's going to come back. And we'll tease it out. Okay, we'll also, let me turn that around and show you what happens. We'll pull the tail feathers out, tease that hackle out all the way around. Get that thread. And we've got a bass bug that's got a nice hackle skirt on there and none of it's been cut out. Okay, let's put our 3 aught thread on there and let's tie this weed guard off where we can go fishing. Pull that hair back. Put a jam knot right in front. Run that monofilament weed guard right up through that eye. Pull the hair back, get it out of our way. Take about four wraps around there. Adjust that weed guard where it's about 3 sixteenths to a quarter of an inch from the point. Bend that monofilament back and tie it down. Don't tie it down all the way to the hair. We want enough room to slip our scissors in there 
and just nip that right off. Take a couple of more wraps to secure it down. Whip finish. Seam out that head with bug glaze. A nice, shiny, hard appearance. Okay, now this fly can be fished in many different colors. I mean, it's, you know, it's just varied and it's just left up to your imagination. Bass like all colors. I can tell you this, on a dark, overcast day, they like dark flies. On a sunny, bright day, they like light flies. If I were you, I'd tie some in all different colors and always have them in my fly box. I guarantee you I do. Okay, I tell you what let's do. Let's fish these little pads with this little Dahlberg diver. There's a couple of things we need to do. The first, we need to be real accurate with our cast. And the second, you gotta be able to trust that weed guard that we've tied on these flies. So let's cast this fly out there See if we can catch a big old bass. Put on that lily pad and just pick it right off of there. We got a little more open water here. This time we can fish that Dahlberg a little more aggressively, give it a little better pop. We'll cast that Dahlberg right in there at the edge of those lily pads, let it sit, and then go ahead and give it a pretty big pop in there. Strip it and make that Dahlberg dive. Keep that rod tip pointed down toward that line. Make another cast in there, just work the, work the cover. There he is, there he is, right in that pocket. Let me get him out of there. Get out of there, there, fish. Those lily pads, all right, all right. <laughs> there had to be a fish in that pocket. I'd like to introduce you to one of the most innovative flies that we've had come along for topwater bass fishing in the last 10 to 15 years. This is Larry Dahlberg's Dahlberg Diver. We're going to tie this fly using a 3366 hook, 20 pound hard mason monofilament. I like to use rubber hackle in between my neck hackle. The tail is regular neck hackle, but it's wide and webby neck hackle that we use for bass flies. We're going to tie the body out of deer hair, and we're going to use two colors of deer hair. This fly will absolutely walk and talk in the water. Let me show you how to tie it. Let's start this fly using a 3366 Mustad hook. We'll put a 20 pound hard mason monofilament weed guard on here. Let's take some 3 aught yellow thread, put a jam knot right at the point of the hook. Right up on top of the shank and advance it about a quarter of an inch. Get some rubber hackle. Use about three strands of white, three strands of yellow. We'll just wrap it right around the thread, pull it right up on top of the hook shank, take one wrap of thread, and we can just pull that rubber where it stretches out a little bit and just tie it down. Just over wrap with thread and advance about halfway up the hook shank. We'll trim that rubber off where it's, we don't want it to look like a toothbrush. We want it where it's staggered just a little bit. Okay, let's select some neck hackle. This is a grizzly neck butt. We want to choose wide and webby feathers, but we don't want the stem to be absolutely unruly. Let's select about six of these out of here. Let's even up the tips.
Okie doke, we'll snip them off, same distance. We'll grab them where three on each side, and each one of them curve out. We're not going to trim any of the fibers off this stem because we don't want them to splay on top of the hook shank. So we'll just put our butts where we cut it off. We'll take a couple of wraps back. That way they're going to stick right on top of the hook shank. Now we can pull them to either side. And we can finish wrapping back. Every time you make a wrap on the near side, just support these feathers a little bit. And the far side, do the same with those feathers. And advance the thread back. And right here we'll tie this off. We'll tie this 3 aught thread off. And we'll cement this whole area with flex cement. Okay, let's change threads. We want to get a thread to do our hair work with. You can either use size A rod wrapping thread like I use, or you can use size A monocord, either one. Put a jam knot right there, and this is the mid, about the mid shank point. We'll wrap back just about a sixteenth of an inch to put our, our collar on. Okay, let's use this yellow deer hair, and we'll cut off a clump, again about the size of a lead pencil. Get the fuzz out of there. Get our little poodle brush and get it out if we can't get it out like that. Okay, and we'll put it in our hair stacker. And we'll stack the ends. Grab the tips of the hair. Trim off the butts where they'll be even. We want to can it right across the hook shank, just a little bit, right up on top. Take two loops wrap, pull straight down. Pull one through it. The thread pressure, if you hold it canted just a little bit, will ride itself and just roll it right around that hook shank. Hold it. There. Pull back. And we'll make a couple of wraps in front. That way it'll hold that hair up. We'll do the same thing with another clump. Only this time we're going to trim off the tips of the hair. Don't need to use our stacker this time. Grab it, hold it between your thumb and forefinger. Trim off the butts, trim off the tips. Hold it at a little bit of an angle. Bring your thread forward. Bring it right through the middle. Bring it down. Take two wraps, pull straight down. One more and pull straight through. Wrap in front with thread. Now let's grab our hair packer. And as we pack this thread, let's just kind of twist it back and forth. Just a little bit there. Okay, and pack that pretty tight back in there. Wrap in front of that hair again. Take your fingernail and push that thread back just a touch. Now we've got a nice collar started there. Let's advance our thread and we'll spin the white hair on. And I'll even show you a little trick how you can get it really tight on top. Again, we'll get the fuzz out of here. Even it up on the butts and the tips. Bring it across at an angle. Take a second, wrap it around, pull straight down and let it spin. Bring it in front, grab the hair packer, push back. Okay, now we're going to continue doing this with this white hair until we almost fill up the hook shank. But we want to leave enough head room where we can tie the monofilament weed guard off. Okay, and again we'll lay it in here, I'll advance your thread, lay it in here a little bit of an angle, come around, pull straight down, and just let it rotate around. And let me show you how you can tighten this now. Want a real compact body, one that floats a long time. 
clean it out, trim the butts and the tips. Now let's just lay this right up on top of that hair that we just spun. Bring that down and with your thumb flatten it out. And just pull down your thread, one more wrap, pull down. Come in front, take your packer, Okay, now we really increased the density, density in that wrap. Advance forward and we'll do the same thing all over again. One more time. Trim off the butts, the tips, lay it in there a little angle. Pull straight down, let it go. Pack it. Okay, now let's tie this rod wrapping thread off. And we'll trim this bug. And again, we'll take it out of the vise and we'll hold it upside down. When you hold it upside down, you can just grasp the hair on the other side or grab the bend of the hook, either one. Just cut straight back and cut all the way back. Now you notice I've, there's a vacancy right in here between our tail and where we first started spinning deer hair. And I did that for a purpose. You know, I found out that these bugs, if they got that little space in there, they dive a heck of a lot better than if you fill that with your hackle or hair. Okay, now that we've got that nice flat bottom, let's grab our scissors. These are curved scissors. These really do come in handy. Let's start right at the eye, and we'll cut a symmetrical curve. Just in the white hair, right back to the yellow. And we'll turn it around, and we'll do the same thing on this side. This way again, we're, we're getting our reference cuts. We've got a flat bottom. Now we've got a good curve cut on each side. We'll turn that bug over and we'll take our razor blade. And you start right in here at this point and just follow that curvature with the razor blade. Just right back to the yellow and just go around. Now we'll bring our scissors in here We'll push back on that yellow hair and come in there and just grab that white, just like this. Just right in there. Okay, now we'll finish our cut with our, we'll trim with our razor blade. Okay, we'll trim the collar. And we can just start over here and we'll just trim a little bit and just try to keep it the same distance all the way around from the white. Okay, let's put it in the vise. Put a jam knot right behind the eye. Bring our monofilament weed guard up through the eye. When you leave room, you want to leave room about the length of the eye of the hook. That way you'll have enough room to tie off the weed guard. And just hold that hair back. Okay, adjust the weed guard. Three-eighths to a quarter. And pull it back. Tie the weed guard in. Get your scissors. Run it right under that monofilament and snip it off. Okay, let's whip finish. Okay, we'll clip that thread. 
put a drop of cement on there. And we'll roll it over and put a little on the bottom. Okay, there's something you want to do on Dahlberg that really does help. You want to take this Dahlberg. Of course, you, you, can, you can take your razor blade and just make it as smooth and pretty as you want to. After you get it to a place that you like it, take Dave's Flex Cement. Thin it down where it's just almost like water. Take your brush and absolutely just saturate the bug in the thin flex cement, especially the collar. What that'll do when it bug is, is stripped, it'll dive much better because that collar will be stiff. It'll make more noise and dive a lot better. Let's give this little Dahlberg a chance to dry and let's take it fishing. I bet you'll like it as much as I do. You know, we're fishing in these lily pads and there's lots of little old frogs that live in these lily pads. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Dahlberg and I'm gonna fish all these pockets and all these edges. Now I'll just go around, put it right up on that lily pad let it settle, strip it back. You don't have to bring it all the way in. We're fishing a floating line. We'll fish about four foot, pick it up and make another cast and work that line. It's got to be a bass in that cover. There, there's a wake. There's a wake. There he is. There he is. There he is. Get him out of those lily pads. Come on, get out of those lily pads. <laughs> okay, that fish just sucked that bug in. And it's always wake behind it. You just gotta hold on. Hold on. Okay. You know what I like to do when I catch a big fish like this? gives me a lot of pleasure. It's to revive him by moving him back and forth and let him go to reproduce again. Bye, big guy. We're going to tie a stacked head Dahlberg diver. For the hook, we're going to use a 3366. This is a 2 aught, but you can tie it in all sizes. We're going to use a weed guard of 20 pound hard mason. We're going to have a rubber hackle right out the back really gives a lot of action to bass flies. We're going to use bass bug hackle again for the tails. For the body and the collar, we're going to use different colors of deer hair. We're going to use white for the bottom, yellow, olive, and black. We're going to stack four times through here with those various colors. I want you to learn how to do a modeled effect, and you can use this in all kind of stacked flies. This stacking technique is very important in any kind of hair work. Come on, I'll guarantee you, I can teach you how to do it. First thing we want to put on there is rubber hackle. Take about two strands of green, two strands of yellow, and about two strands of chartreuse. We'll double it over the three-aught thread, grasp the other side, ride it on top of the hook shank, take one wrap in front, pull the rubber back, and tie it in and just kind of stretch it as we tie down on it. The thing about rubber that you want to do is we want to tie it way back to the bend of the hook. If we do that, we won't have that rubber wrap around the hook shank. Advance the thread forward about a quarter of an inch in front of the point of the hook. Let's cement this area. Okay, and we'll select some hackles. These again are neck hackle that are bass quality, nice webby feathers. We'll take four olives and a couple of yellows, and we'll put a yellow between each olive. And again, we're not going to trim any of those barbs off. We're going to tie it right on 
our butts that we cut, tie it down, pull right up on top of the hook shank, and tie down to right before you tied the rubber in. Okay, now we're going to pull three to each side. And they'll fit right on side of the rubber. If they don't, like that one, just grab them and just pull them and work them. And now they'll sit in there real nice. We'll overwrap all this with thread. Let me trim, snip off that little stray there. And we'll whip finish. Our three aught thread. And we'll change to our rod wrapping thread or size A monocord, whichever one you want to use. And we'll do a jam knot just about mid shank and we'll work back about a sixteenth of an inch. Snip off our tag. Now we'll cement that whole area. Okay, we'll advance our thread to the halfway point. Okay, now we're going to tie in our collar. And again, this is going to be a, a stacking process and I'm going to teach you how to get different colors on the bottom and top and get that variegated effect that frogs and sculpins and all kind of animals have. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to use a white deer hair for the bottom and we'll just snip off a bit, just again, just about a size of a pencil. And we're going to, for the first stack, we're going to even up the tips. Bring it in here, cut these butts even. Okay, now we're going to cant this right on top of the hook shank. It's going to be halfway between the tips and where we made our cut. Take two loose wraps around. Now we want to hold this secure as we tighten our thread. We pull down with thread pressure till it flares. Now we take our thread and just push that hair around. We grab the far side of the hair, tighten, take another wrap, tighten down again. The next color hair we want to put on there is the yellow and take about half the quantity of white hair that we put on there. Clean it out even up the tips. Now this is a collar and this is the only time we'll have to even up these tips. The rest of it, we'll cut them off. Snip off the tips. We're going to hold this right up on top of the hook shank. Take two lat wraps of thread. Now as we grasp the white on this side, we mash down, mash the yellow with our left thumb and tighten. Take one more wrap and tighten down again. Take half again as much olive as we did yellow. Clean the trash out of it. Even up the tips. Trim the butts off. Same technique. Now you'll notice one thing. Every time I start to put a new little clump of hair on here, I've made two wraps around that hair. Now the first thing I'm going to do is unwrap one of them and make two more wraps on the olive. What that does, it just saves us some thread wraps because we're going to have a lot of thread wraps in here. Again, hold it and mash down with your thumb. And this is going to get really nice vertical bars across there. And there, here again, we're going to take half as much black as we did yellow. And so if you can remember that, all the way through, we're going to cut it in half as we stack. And again, this is the last collar. So we'll cut the butts off. 
put it right up on top, unwrap one wrap, and then grasp the black. Grasp everything over here and mash that black down with your thumb as you tighten. One more wrap, pull down. Now we're going to kind of separate this. We want the white on bottom and the yellow on top. So just run your scissors in there and just separate it. And just pull back, tie right up in front. Bring your bobbin in there close and wrap. If you get a few strands of deer hair, of the white deer hair in there, just clip it out. Advance our thread. Come in with some flex cement and put a good drop of flex cement right in that tie-in area that we tied all that in. We're going to do this process one more time. <laughs> in fact, we're going to do this same process three more times till we continue this fly. So let's grab about a pencil of deer hair. We'll clip it off near the skin. Get that fuzz out of there. Even up the butts and the tips. We'll hold it over the hook shank. We'll flare it down and then we'll just roll it over with our thread. Grab it on the far side, cinch that thread down pull and do it down again. Just separate that white just like that if it just if it comes up there a little bit too much and get it out of the way. About half the same size of yellow. Trim off both. Hold it right up on a hook shank. Mash down and as we hold the white on the other side this keeps it from rotating around the hook shank. Olive. Again, half as much as the yellow. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get about the same amount of hair on the top of the hook shank as we have on the bottom of the hook shank. Mash the olive down. One more wrap, cinch it down again. And again, just a smidgen of black. Trim the butts and the tips. Unwrap, run wrap. Capture that black. Push it down right in the middle. Take one wrap. Pull the yellow and the white apart. Just work your scissors in there and separate them. Kind of tease it back. Wrap in front. Take our hair packer and push it back. Bring it up again and make some wraps right around the hook shank. And if we got any little white stray deer hair, just come in and snip them off. One thing you can do is you can, you can turn this fly to the side if you've got a rotating vise, and look right on top. And you can tell if, if, your, if your stacks are right in the middle of the hook shank where they could be, where they should be. Let's advance the thread a little bit farther. We'll put a little drop of flex cement again right in there to the base of that hair. And we'll do exactly the same thing again with the white hair. Okay, and this time we're not going to use quite as much white hair as we did before. Every one of our stacks toward, cinch it down, roll it around, towards the front of the hook are going to get just a little bit smaller. Grasp it on the other side, cinch it down. We'll put our yellow in there. Right up on top. Mash it, cinch it down. And take a second wrap. Our olive. 
goes right on top of the yellow. And trim both ends. Put it right on top of the hook shank. Mash down and take a second wrap. And again, just a little smaller clump of black. These last two clumps of our stacking, we've got our, we've got our collar stack on there, and then we've got one, two. Okay, the, the next two, the black is just really a little tiny bit of black. Okay, unwrap, put the black in there, mash it down, cinch it down, take one more wrap. Got a little white in there. I'm just going to clip it out. Separate it, pull back, take a wrap in front, get our packing tool, and just really pack it in there tight. Couple of wraps in front, advance the thread, a little bit smaller piece of white, Clean out that fuzz every time. You'll be glad you did. Roll it around the hook shank, cinch it down, and then just roll it right around with thread. Just a little bit of white right there. I'm just going to clip it right out. A little bit of yellow. Mash down with a thumb holder. Our finger. Again, take two wraps. And we'll put the olive in there on the last one. And again, about half as much olive. Unwrap one thread wrap, capture the olive, mash it down flat where we're tightening the thread. Okay, and just a few hairs on the black deer. Maybe not just barely a dozen. Unwrap it that black in there and mash it down. Let's tie this thread off right now. We'll do a whip finish and I'll show you how to trim it. Just cut that thread off right in there. Take it out of the vise. Again, we'll turn it upside down. And just work it down. Okay, take our curved scissors. We'll start at the eye. Again, we'll get that symmetrical cut. And we'll turn our scissors around and do the other side. Okay, now we've got the bottom and we've got each side We'll roll it around. We'll take a razor blade and we'll just come in here and we'll just cut back. And we'll cut through about two and a half stacks. We're going to have a nice taper on there. Neat thing about the angle on these Dahlbergs is you can do so much with them because all the different angles mean that that bug's going to dive differently. If it's a, an abrupt angle right here, that bug will, will dive abruptly. If it's a long, skinny angle, then that bug's going to dive deeper at a longer angle. You know, I wish I was the innovative fly tire that thought this fly up, but since I'm not, I really appreciate Larry Dahlberg doing it.
put that razor blade down now, grab our scissors, and again, we'll trim that collar off where it's the same distance from the bug all the way around. And here again, the different ways you can cut the collar means the different ways that the water will flow over it. And so you can get all kind of different techniques on fishing a Dahlberg. Boy, I've caught more fish top water on this fly than any of my other flies. Thanks again, Larry. You know, this is a baby doll muddler. It's one of my favorite top water flies. Especially when you got a little breeze, you got a little ripple on the water. Really gives this marabou a lot of animation. It'll sit still in the water and look like it's swimming. I'll tell you what else I'd like to share with you. I'd like to share with you a little story about how I came about getting this little fly. Go into my fly tying room and we'll do both. The baby doll is tied on a 3366 hook with also a, a mason, hard mason monofilament weed guard, 20 pounds. The tail is a combination of six white blood feathers and a couple of of hackles on each side. These are grizzly hackles. Some flash out of silver and pearl crystal flash. The body again is is hackled grizzly. The gills are hackled red grizzly and the head is white deer hair. And the eyes also are baby doll eyes and they help the flotation a heck of a lot. As we tie this baby doll muddler you'll notice that the weed guard doesn't come down quite as far. You only have to come down about a third of the bend of the hook on any kind of floating fly. We'll come back to the point we tie it in at and we'll tie in six marabou blood feathers about one and a half to two times the body length. And we'll lay them down, a couple of wraps, and then pull up on the marabou and wrap back. Grab the butts and cut them off at an angle. Okay, we'll wrap our butts down. Come back to our tie-in point. Take about five strands of silver crystal flash and about five strands of pearl crystal flash. Double them, double them over our thread, over wrap, trim about the same length as your marabou, and we'll pull the crystal flask to each side, and just preen as you go. Now the neck hackle we use in bass flies is a little bit different than, than uh, the hackle you use in a regular dry fly uh, or trout fly. You want a webby feather, one that has a substantial stem that will kick back in the water. We'll put two of these on each side. We'll line all of them up at one time, putting the tips of the feathers together. And we'll hold them up and measure. And just, we want them just about as long as the marabou, but not quite. Come in with our scissors and we'll trim all of them at one time. We'll take two of these and we'll tie two of them on each side of our wrap-in area. And two on the opposite side. This gives that fishy appearance. Makes this little muddler look like something that a bass would really like to eat. Okay, the next thing we do is tie in about two saddles. These are grizzly saddles. And again, you don't have to buy really great quality grizzly because you want a lot of fluff at the base and you want webby feathers. Okay, we'll trim them and we'll strip a little bit off. We'll tie them in on the near side. 
and advance our thread, leaving about a quarter of an inch to the mid shank. At this time, we'll cement the underbody of the whole fly with flex cement. Okay, we'll hackle forward and we'll just palmer it and pulling the the present wrap out of your way just keep pulling it back and keep advancing forward holding the feather with your right hand you tie it off with your left Clip the tips of the feathers. Take a couple of wraps to secure. Now for the gills, we'll take a saddle which has been dyed red. It's been proven in a lot of studies in bass fishing that a bass looks for a prey fish who either has swollen gills or blood coming out the gills. And so I try to put gills in almost all of these flies that I tie. Okay, let's Cut the stem of the feather, leaving a little bit of the fluff, and we'll strip a little bit off. We'll tie in on the underneath side of the hook shank. I ah, see, I left a little too much stem. Let's nip that off. Okay, cement that area. Just a little touch of cement right there where our tying area is. Okay, we're we will palmer our red saddle feathers forward. And again, every time we go around the hook shank, we'll pull the saddle feather, the barbules back, and we'll hackle right in front of that area. Want a good, nice little palmering effect there that'll look like gills. Okay, we'll tie it off. Again, holding it with our right hand, tying it off with our left. And we'll snip that off. This deer hair is, is body deer hair. It's nice and spongy feeling. It's hollow and it floats real well. Okay, we'll cut a clump off about the size of a number two pencil. Get all the fuzz and under fur out of it. We'll put it in our hair stacker and we'll even up the tips. Okay, you can see that the tips are even. We'll pull it out. Okay, and with our scissors, we'll trim the butts where they'll be nice and even. Okay. We'll take the clump of hair, we'll lay it on the inside of the hook shank. We'll take a couple of wraps around the deer hair, and as we pull straight down with the thread, we're going to release the hair a little bit at a time. And that way we just spin it right around the hook shank. Pull it back, a couple of wraps in front. With our hair packer, we'll just push that back a little bit. With the fingernail, we'll push the thread right back in there. This way it'll hold that hair straight up and down. Now we'll put one more clump on there. You want to be sure and leave enough room for the uh, head when we tie off that monofilament weed guard. So right now it's kind of a critical point. You sure don't want to get too much on there. Again, take a couple of wraps, pull down. It's amazing. You'll think you got that completely full and you can go ahead and push that back and pack it back, hold it, and now we've got enough room for that monofilament weed guard to be tied on. Okay, we're going to take the fly out of the vise. I like to turn it upside down and grab hold of the hook. When I trim this, I want to trim this so that I have a width of about a half inch. So I'm going to trim straight back on each side. And as I trim back, I use a little sawing motion. 
Okay, also trim on this side. You'll notice that I leave my bobbin on here. If you feel more comfortable uh, by tying off a, a, a whip finish knot and then retying, go ahead and do that. You sure don't have to. Okay, on the on the bottom we're going to cut it in a in a round shape, and this round shape is going to match these eyes. This is a 12 millimeter doll eye, and so you can just kind of put it up there as such and see if we've cut that correctly. Okay, and if we have, we're going to go ahead and finish trimming it. And again, use this a little sawing motion with the razor blades. Okay, we'll put it back in the vise. Okie doke, let's put this weed guard in. Put the monofilament through the eye. Take a couple of wraps. And again, we'll adjust it where it's about a quarter of an inch from the point. Okay, now we're going to cement our baby doll eyes on. That's really where the fly gets the name. And these eyes are 15 millimeter movable baby doll eyes. And we'll put them on using goop as the cement. Now we'll just take our bodkin, take a little dollop of goop, put it on each side, just kind of work it right down into the deer hair. Oak, oak. We'll put our eyes on there. And we want to be sure that the eye is over halfway up on the hook shank. In other words, 60% of the eye is above the hook shank. This way we'll get a good rocking motion when we strip the fly. Okay, be sure that they're even. Hold them just a minute, let the cement set just a second. Okay, and we'll take that little baby doll and we'll finish trimming the top using the eyes as a reference. And we'll just come straight back. With a razor blade, blow off any excess and then we'll just preen with our razor blade until it gets where you want it to, to go. This fly is very effective fished when there's just the least little wind blowing. It's fished top water and this marabou in a wind, the water, it really moves even though the fly is sitting still. First time I saw this fly, it was on the end of somebody else's leader. A friend of mine named Robert McCurdy from Austin, Texas. And the reason it was so intriguing to me is Robert and I have a little competition when we go fishing on the Colorado River. And Robert had me down about five to one. And so I kept trying to see this fly and Robert kept hiding it. Finally, as we were climbing out at the end of the day, I grabbed his fly box and looked at this muddler and said, boy, that's for me. And this is the way I found Robert's fly. And I've fished it ever since and enjoyed it for a long time. One of my best big fish flies was this shiner pattern. We'll tie it in both a deer hair head that we can fish subsurface. We'll tie it in a wool head with lead eyes that we can fish deeper. It really gets big bass. This pattern is very effective. Let's go in and tie it. This is a Shinabu Shiner. This is one of the two realistic flies that we're going to tie in this tape. I was fishing with a Florida guide. 
He said, I'll tell you what, Jimmy. He said, you got some nice flies. He said, the problem is you don't have a big shiner fly. Bass really feed on shiners. Boy, I went home right then and I started working on a shiner fly. And this is the fly that I've come up with. I'm real pleased with it because it's, re it's really done me good in a lot of days. Let me show you just quickly the different materials we're going to use on this and why we use them. I'm going to use a 34007 stainless steel saltwater hook this time for the simple reason that this pattern's a little involved. It takes a little time to tie. And so when we put it back in the fly box, we don't want that hook to rust. We'll put a weed guard on, 20, 25 pound hard mason. On top of that, we're going to tie a, a little bucktail. Let me find it right under here. This bucktail gives this fly a little white belly. It also keeps the saddle hackles from fouling around the hook. We're going to put crystal flash in there, a couple of colors of crystal flash. Crystal flash is twisted all the way back. It's kind of subtle, but when it's in the water, it looks, it looks just like scales. We're going to get a little veiling. This little veiling is going to be marabou. What this does, it just looks like that fish is moving all the time. Gills that we've talked about before, that's so important. We're going to put red gills in there. This head, because we're going to fish it up near the surface, it's going to be tied out of deer hair. Of course, the eyes. You know, the eyes have it. If you want a realistic fly, this prey fish has got to have eyes. Let's go ahead and tie the Shinabu Shiner right now. Let's tie a jam knot with 3 aught silver gray thread on the hook shank right above the point of the hook. We'll also tie in about half a pencil size of bucktail. We'll put that in our hair stacker. Even up the tips and measure it, and we'll have about one and a half hook shank length. Okay, and we'll tie this on. Work forward, and we'll cut our butts off at an angle. We'll We'll tie the bucktail down and come back to our previous tie-in point. Next thing we want to put on our fly is gray saddle hackle. This saddle hackle needs to be a silvery gray color, almost like a shiner. This is strung hackle. We'll snip it off and we'll even up about either six to eight saddle hackles. It's really according to how good the saddle hackle is. After we even up the tips of our saddle feathers, we'll put them where their concave side is out. That way the feathers will splay. We're going to put them up here and we will measure them about two times the, the whole hook length. Put them back to our tie-in point. Measure. Bring them down here and cut off just about a quarter of an inch in front of that. And we'll clean the fibers off. And you'll notice that I'm not going to cut off any of the barbules. That'll keep these feathers from, from twisting and splaying when we tie them all in. Advance our thread a little bit. We'll just tie in the butts that we cut. Take a couple of wraps and secure it. Now we want to lift these feathers up. That way they'll right themselves right on top of the hook shank. Wrap back and then wrap forward a little way. Now we've got them all be the same distance and they've got a little splay to them. The next thing we want to do, we'll tie on crystal flash. You've got to have that flash for a shiner when it's going through the water. Tie in about five to six strands of silver crystal flash and about five to six strands of pearl crystal flash. Even them up. And again, we'll use a technique of wrapping these around the thread, grabbing the other sides, putting them right on top, and then over wrapping them with thread. 
We'll pull it back and we'll cut this not quite as long as the tail. And we want to cut this kind of at a, at a graduated angle. We'll take about a third of it off. We'll go back a little farther, another third, and then another third. Okay, let's dub body out of Antron. This is a silvery Antron. Antron has great properties. It's easy to dove and it really has a nice sheen to it. I want to show you a way that you can single-handedly dub Antron. A lot of people have trouble dubbing Antron because every time you dub it tight, it springs back. And there's a little trick that Dave Whitlock taught me a long time ago. The thing you want to do is you want to just kind of sharpen the Antron with your fingers. We'll put that right under the hook shank. Take a couple of wraps with our thread. Now with our Antron, we'll just wrap it right around the thread. Grab it in one hand and just kind of tease it out. You can pull it just a little bit and just continually dub. And you just got a nice, real nice dubbing there. Go forward a little bit, back till you get the body size that you want. We'll come forward to just about the halfway point on the hook shank. And we almost get there, just tease it out and starve it where it comes right off the thread. Grab hold of it where you can continue dubbing and come forward. Take a couple of wraps to secure everything. Now if you take your bodkin and just kind of tease this out, that Antron looks great in the water. Okay, next step, we're going to tie a veil with a silver gray marabou. And we'll stroke this marabou out, and then we're going to tear it off the stem and we'll fold it down. Tear off the stem and fold it down. And what we want to do is just we want to kind of make a little cylinder out of marabou. Pull it off and with our scissors we'll trim off any of the stem that was torn off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to spin this around the hook shank just like we would deer hair. Put it right on top of the hook shank and with thread just grasp the butts of the marabou, take a couple of loose wraps, pull down and just let it spin. If it doesn't spin all the way around, just loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten with that thread and it'll just walk all the way around the hook shank. Take a couple of wraps to secure, just kind of pu push it back with your fingernails. We want to be real sure right here. This is our tie-in point. We really want to keep this the exact point that we're going to tie in almost everything before we do our head. Okay, the next thing we're going to tie on are gills. These gills are out of the fluff from saddle hackle. I tie a lot of saltwater flies and, and these are white saddles that I tie lefty to sears out of. What I do is I just, after I tie my flies, and trim the saddles off. I just take this fluff and dye it red. Makes great gills. Okay, we'll just pick one off. We'll do the same way. We'll just pull it off and fold it down. Okay. We'll trim any of the stem that came off with it. We'll put it on the far side. Capture it with thread and take a couple of wraps. We'll do the same thing on the near side. Just pull it off, fold it down, and pull it off again. And grab it, clip that stem off of there. There's a kind of a little trick to putting it on the near side. I'm going to hold it in there, and with our thumb, we'll just hold it flat down. Take a couple of loose wraps. While holding with your thumb, we'll just tighten down. Remember, that wrap's got to be exactly the same place. We'll trim off any excess marabou. 
Okay, and we'll put a little more crystal flash on. And we're going to do about the same size crystal flash and the same number of strands. Again, we're going to use pearl and silver. About five, six strands of silver and five or six strands of pearl. Okay, we'll even these up. Wrap them around the thread. Double them back. Now this time, we want to we want to bring our crystal flash right above our tie-in point. Take one wrap with our thread. Just pull everything back, and then go into our tie-in point that I said was so critical to keep. Take a few wraps, and again, we'll taper our cuts on our crystal flash. We'll start just about the, the midpoint or where we ended up on our uh, crystal flash that we tied in previously, and we'll cut about a third. We'll go back a little ways, cut another third, and then go back and cut. This way you've got a nice taper of crystal flash and it looks like scales all the way back. Okay, we'll pull about six strands out. Clip them off, tie in on top exactly the same way, capture it with thread, pull it back, and tie in at exactly that point. And again, we'll come back and we'll trim it taper the same way. Okay, at this point, we're going to tie off our 3 aught thread because from now on we're going to change to a more substantial thread where we can spin some hair. Okay, for my hair work, I'm going to use a rod wrapping thread in a size A. You can use size A monocord or any heavy thread you want to use. We'll put a jam knot right in front of our tie-in area and again we'll go back right over our tie-in area and take two wraps. Our first clump of deer hair is going to go right on that. And I'm going to show you a little trick because uh, you just can't spin in an area like that. We'll tap up and even up the tips of our deer hair. Get any strays out that doesn't look right. We'll clip the butts off. And then we're just going to grab the butts of the hair and just kind of fan it out. And we're going to shove it straight around the hook where the hair goes all the way around the hook shank. We're going to grasp it with our left hand and very gingerly we're going to take two loose wraps right in that tie-in position. Now we're going to tighten this thread and as we tighten it this hair is going to flare in exactly that place. Just like that. Just tighten it, take one more wrap, tighten again. Okay, now we've got a collar all the way around our fly, and we hadn't disturbed the body. Let's tie on our second clump of deer hair, and this time we'll trim the tips off because we're going to spin the hair. Okay, we'll brush the underfur, that fuzz out of there where it'll spin a little bit better. Grasp it one time, even up the butts, and trim off the tips. We'll lay it at an angle on the inside of the hook. Take a tough couple of loose wraps of thread around there, pull straight down, and let it rotate around the hook shank. One more wrap, pull it back, tie in front, and then we'll take our hair packer, and we'll push it back. Now this time I'm going to do a whip finish with this rod wrapping thread because I don't like the way that you can you finish a head with it. And we'll fit whip finish right here. Clip that thread and we we put on that weed guard, we'll change to a 3 aught thread, which will make it a lot easier for us to do that. 
Let me show you the way we're going to cut this head. We want this head at an angle from the eye of the hook to the point and the same reference on the top. So let's take this razor blade and we'll just go from the, the, from the uh, area right behind the eye at an angle to right below the point of the hook. Okay, we'll flip it over and do the same thing on top. And about that same angle going up. Okay, our other reference point, we're going to cut at an angle on each side. And we'll worry about rounding this off. We want to make our straight cut symmetrical. Then we can always round it off and make it a shape we want to. Let me show you what I mean. I want to take this straight angle, like a reference point like I was talking about, straight back at about a 30 degree angle. And using our hook point, do the same underneath. Then we want to cut the right side and the left side at an angle. Now we can, we can trim it, round it off, and do any shape we want to. But if you make those first cut correctly, then the head's going to be great. And that's with any hair work. You always have to have reference points working with hair. If you just start chopping on a fly without knowing where you're going, you really blow it. Okay, we've just about got this to the shape we want. Let's put it back in the vise. Let me show you a little trick that I use that helps me inserting eyes and flies. What I use is a little wood burner. And this little wood burner will burn any protein, so since your hand's protein, be careful. But you can take it and just make eye sockets with it. Just touch where you want to put the eyes, rotate that around, kind of get the same area where you want it. Just touch it. Okay. Now we're going to put a six millimeter solid eye in there. So we'll just make a little eye socket. As such. Now we'll take our bodkin and we'll just touch it in there and just flick the burn part of the hair out. That way when we goop this eye in, it'll hold. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's get our goop. You know, this, this goop is a wonderful product. Us in fly time, just use it for all kind of things. We'll just put a small dollop in there, right in that socket, and a little bit on the other side. Okay, we'll grab our six millimeter eyes, okay, and just run in here with the back part of the scissors and just cut this little stem off. Set it right in the socket and watch that little shiner come alive. Do the same thing on the other side. Again, use the back part of the scissors and you can get away with a heck of a lot on these scissors. Do all your rough work in the back part and your fine work in the front. Looking at these flies, I bet you all think there's not much fine work we do in this. Okay, we'll put our 3 aught gray monocord back on with a jam knot right in front. Snip the thread. Bring our weed guard up through the eye. There we go. That's the shine of it. I tell you what, I never go anywhere without this fly, anywhere where there's bass. It's just been too good to me for too long.
This shiner boost shiner is going to have a wool head. Everything up to the head is the same as the shiner boo that we've just tied. Let's put our thread on. This time we'll use either a size A or size A rod wrapping thread. We'll cover the hook shank. This time we're going to use lead eyes. The lead eyes help this fly sink and it gives it a good action when it's going through the water. We'll tie them on exactly the same way. We'll cross through, cross over again. Now we'll X, come under the hook shank, over the bar, through in front, under the hook shank, to the back, cross through. Now we'll just exit. We'll come back to that tie-in point that I've talked about, that same tie-in point. We'll get our wool. Again, this is just regular lamb's wool that's on the skin, and I've dyed this a light silver gray. Take our little poodle comb and brush it out. Get all the tangles out. We'll snip a clump off, about a pencil size. This wool is awfully long. Let's cut it in half. Again, we'll part it right in the middle. Just shove it right around the hook shank. Take a couple of wraps with thread. Secure it down. Pull back and come up right in front of our wool. And we'll just repeat this process all over again. Compact the wool. Just part it a little bit, shove it right around the hook shank. Take a couple of wraps, tighten, come right up between the eyes. Wrap a couple of wraps right in front. Take one more clump of wool. And we'll put this third clump right in front. Shove it right around the hook shank and wrap tight to those eyes. Two wraps, tighten down, pull back and tie in front. Okay, again, I'm going to tie off my thread right in this area. We'll whip finish. Okay, snip our thread, and we'll take this fly out of the vise. Turn it upside down, and again we're going to use the hook point as the reference. Bring your scissors right behind the eye to the hook point. Just make one cut. Turn it over. Let's make that second cut. Make it about the same angle as the one before. Now we'll make our side cuts using our eyes as a reference. Bring those scissors in there right next to those eyes and cut back. One bad thing about wool is I can't use a razor blade. You have to use scissors. I've tried every way in the world to use a razor blade and you just can't do it. Okay. And we'll just, now we'll round all those edges. And just brushing away the wool as we go. Just pull that wool up. That way we can get a good cut on it. Okay. And you get it where you want it. You like the shape of the head. It looks like a little shiner. Sometimes it takes just a little while to trim these, but they last a long time. Unless you catch a lot of fish on them and then you don't care. OK, 
Okay, we'll pull it up just a little bit, snip that off, even it up. And when we finish it, we can take our fine pointed scissors and come right in here around the eye. Okay, let's put it back in the vise. Get our three aught thread, put a jam knot right in here. Pull that wool back so we'll have room enough to tie our weed guard off. Let me change to some fine pointed scissors where I can work in there around the eye. And work in here right where we're going to get that weed guard. Okay, pull it away just a little bit where those gills will show. And let's just clip this off. Just give it, there we go. Now we've got a nice little fishy head. Bring that weed guard up through. Okay. You've noticed I've used Crystal Flash Peacock. Along with the Crystal Flash Peacock, you can also use Peacock Hurls in there. They look fantastic. They don't last a long time when you, when you uh, bass fish. Sometimes I put them in, sometimes not. I don't think it, it does anything to the fishability about the fly, because this little son of a gun just fishes good. I know you'll like it. Fish it. Get out of there. Get out of that moss. Get out of that moss. <laughs> There he is. <laughs> like I said, he was in that moss. He's even got a chunk of moss right on his little nose. Let's rinse some moss off that little fuzzy bee. You know, I really like to put fish back and give somebody else a chance to fish them. You know, this little chartreuse fuzzy bee is really an effective fly. Let's go in the fly tying room and let me teach you how to tie it. This is a fuzzaboo. We can fish this fly in sinking condition. We can fish this fly anywhere from 3 to 15 feet of water according to the size of lead eye that we use. We'll start out tying the fly on a 3366. This is a mustad hook and it's a good bass hook. We're bringing a hook out by TMCO, which is a uh, a bass hook. Right as of right now, it's not out. We're going to tie a weed guard on there because everywhere we find bass almost that we're going to have some type of cover. We're either going to have logs, uh, weed beds, whatever. So we need this monofilament on here. We'll use hard mason monofilament for this weed guard because it softens less than any other monofilament does in water. For the tail, we'll use about six blood feathers for the flash on each side, we'll use crystal flash. The body on this fly, we're going to use just a regular saddle feather, and we're going to uh, palmer it forward to about half the hook shank length. The head is going to be made out of wool. Wool absorbs water much better than anything else, and on sinking flies, it's just a perfect material. The eyes, the eyes are going to be lead eyes. This does two things, and enables this fly to sink very well, and we can control the depth by the size of the lead eye that we use. The other thing is that we get an undulating action when we locate the eyes in this position. Let's use flat wax nylon floss. We'll start our jam knot right behind the eye and we'll continue back to halfway down the bend of the uh, hook. And we'll come back up to the point on top of the hook shank opposite the point of the hook. We'll spin our thread so it'll be flat when we put the weed guard on. We'll use hard mason weed guard. We'll hold it up there and we'll just capture the tip of our hard mason. Take a couple of wraps and what we want to do is we want to pull up on our monofilament. As we pull up, we'll wrap back. This way we can write this monofilament very easily every time on top of the hook shank. We'll wrap it back to the midpoint and then come forward to our tie-in area. We'll tie off here.
we'll change to three aught thread, put our jam knot in the same place. Okay, let's select about a half a dozen immature turkey feathers. These are called blood feathers. What we're looking for, we're looking for a blood feather that the stem is not too substantial. That way we'll get much more movement in the water. We'll take this blood feather and we'll clip the stem out. This stem kind of keeps the feather from moving in the water. Now this way, after we do that, this feather will really undulate in the water and that's what we're looking for. Let's even about six of these up by the tips on our leg and we'll grasp them and just kind of pull them together and about one and a half times the hook shank length is the length that we want to tie on there. So we can measure on that hook shank, hook shank length and the hook is what we want to use the whole way through for our measurements. We'll set it down to our tie-in point which is the part of the hook right above the point of the hook. Okay, take a couple of wraps around there, kind of tight. Raise the butts up and we'll cut these off at an angle. Now we'll over wrap all of this and we'll get a good tie in. Okay, we'll come forward. We'll put about 10 to 12 strands of crystal flash on here. We'll pull these out with our scissors, just a few at a time. One of the neat things about crystal flash, this kind of gets to be unruly once in a while if you leave it out of the package. What you want to do is you want to take your crystal flash and you'll cut a little V in the package. That way, when you bring the crystal flash out, most of it will stay in the package and you just can bring out enough that uh, you want to use. And we'll cut about 10 strands off. Now we'll wrap these strands right around our thread. Grab the other side of the crystal flash, bring them up right on top of the hook shank, and then over wrap. We'll trim, and then we'll pull them to each side and just kind of preen as we go. Okay, let's select the saddle feathers for the body. These are the neat thing, one of the neat things about, about uh, feathers for bass flies, they don't have to be the really expensive ones. This is a number two or a number three mitts. Now it's dyed to the, the color that we want. We'll select about three of these feathers. We want one with, with fuzz right at the bottom of the feather. We'll just pluck three out Okay, we want to leave some of the, the fuzz right down at the base of the feather. So we'll cut these off, we'll strip a little bit of it off, and we'll bring all the stems together, and we'll just tie them on all at one time. Take several wraps and secure the feather in. We'll come forward to half of the hook shanked, and we'll just right, right there. Now we'll cement all at one time. I use Dave's Flex Cement to cement all of my underbodies and almost all of my, my cementing techniques, period. Okay, we'll grab these and we'll just palmer them forward. And you can just grab them all at one time. And again, we'll just palmer them forward, making a nice movable body. If you let one go like I just did, just take a wrap around, grab it, and continue wrapping. And we'll over wrap with thread using our left hand. Trim the tips. Pull back and do a couple of wraps. Now at this time we want to change thread, so I'll do a whip finish right in front. We'll change threads, change from 3 aught to a size A monochord. This will enable us to have a more substantial thread, tie on the lead eyes with, 
and to do our wool work with. Advance the thread about halfway up the hook shank, which is about two lengths of the eye behind the eye of the hook. We have three sizes of lead eyes that we can use on this fly. A small, medium, and large. The large, we can fish the deeper water to the shallower water with the small. Let's use the small eye on this. We'll mount this, we'll put the little bar of the dumbbell eye right on top of the hook shank, and we'll take a couple of wraps. Now we'll come under the hook shank and through the opposite way. Okay, now we'll exit. To X with the thread, we'll go under the hook shank, cross the bar to the opposite side, under the hook shank, cross the bar to the opposite side. And we'll do this several times. Now we'll wrap around the base, which is between the dumbbell and the hook shank, to tighten these X wraps. And every time we'll just tighten it. Go around, tighten, around, and tighten. Okay, now we'll come back to our original point to tie in the wool. This is regular lamb's wool on the skin. First thing we want to do is we want to take either a carding comb or some kind of brush. These can usually be, bu be bought at any pet store and comb this wool out. Get all the kinks out of it. We grab a clump about the size of a number two pencil, clip it off. This is the, one of the easiest processes in fly tying is you just take this clump, shove it on each side right around the hook shank, grasp it with your left hand, take two wraps with the thread around size A monocord, just tighten it, pull back in front, take a couple of wraps, advance the thread to half the distance, take another clump about the same size, do exactly the same thing again. Just part it, just like that, shove it right around the hook shank, take a couple of wraps, tighten down, come right through the midpoint of the bar of the eye, come right in front of the eyes, take a couple of wraps. Do the same thing again with the wool, same size, maybe not quite as much on the front. And we'll just clip it off just a little bit on each side. Shove it right around the hook shank. Grasp it with the left hand, make two wraps. Pull back and then tie right in front. Okay, at this time we're gonna trim the head. Now the, the eyes, are, we're gonna use the eyes as a reference. Okay. We just bring your scissors in here, pull the back up, and just take one clip just as such. Rotate your vise around a little bit. And again, use the eyes as your reference point. Cut straight back on each side. And the bottom. We'll taper the bottom. I like to take the fly out of the vise to trim it. Now we have all these edges. We're just going to trim it off and round them up. And just rotate it and trim as we go around. Pull the wool away from the hackle where we don't trim our hackle off too. Okay, after we've trimmed it where you really like it, let's put it back in the vise and we'll tie off our weed guard. Bring the monofilament weed guard through the eye of the hook, pull the wool back, Take about three wraps around the hook shank and adjust it where there's about three sixteenths of an inch between the monofilament weed guard and the point of the hook. And this will keep us from getting tangled up. Pull the weed guard back over the top, over wrap it with thread. We'll whip finish. Trim our thread, 
trim our weed guard. Okay, now that we've got this fly tied, let me take it out of the vise and show you how this weed guard works. Now, weed guard works when it goes over timber or logs by compression straight to the point of this monofilament. When it goes in the bass mouth, the bass takes, the weed guard is pulled to the side when you strip the fly and the point can get into the bass's mouth. Now that we've tied and fished the fuzzaboo, let me show you a variation on that same pattern. This time we'll put the crystal flash on the bottom and right on top of it we'll tie a four inch strip of rabbit. That way it'll give this fly great action. We'll use the same weed guard construction and we'll cover the hook shank with thread. Now we'll put our jam knot of our three aught thread on the hook shank right above the point of the hook. We'll tie about 10 strands of crystal flash using the same technique. We'll double the crystal flash around the thread, pull it up and over wrap. This way when those old fish grab a hold of that crystal flash, it won't pull out. We'll trim it off. We'll take a little piece of rabbit this is about a quarter inch. We'll tie it in and about four inches in length we'll cut it off. The rest of the fly is tied exactly like the fuzzaboo. This is the finished fuzzy bunny. I think in certain fishing conditions you'll find that it even outfishes the fuzzaboo. Boy, there's just something about that long rabbit tail moving through the water. I tell you what, I'd like to just make one more cast. You know, we always like to make one more cast. At the end of the day, that's when we're going to catch that big bass. I tell you something, I hope you guys enjoy this half as much as I do bringing it to you. I hope you get a lot out of it, and it increases the enjoyment of your bass fly rodding. Well, maybe just one more cast. Hi, I'm Doug McKnight. I'm originally from Pennsylvania. I spent the last few years in Texas learning a lot about bass fishing, and it's a real thrill to be on the same tape as uh, Jimmy Nix, one of the pioneers in uh, bass fishing and bass fly tying, and I'd like to share one of my patterns with you. Uh, it's called a KS slider. The hook that we're going to use today for this fly is a TMCO 8089. Okay, now I'm going to take my saddle hackles and put it right on top of the hook shank, just like this. And then with my left hand, I'm just going to pinch it right where I want to. And it's important to incorporate a lot of this marabou-like type stuff. A lot of people might trim that off and just kind of use this part. But that nice wide, the widest part of the saddle hackle is real. You want to incorporate that into this fly. Just take my left hand, pinch it, make a loose wrap all the way around. Okay, now we got the rear part of the fly tied in. We're going to take our crystal flash and just lay it right over the top, tie that in right on top. What we're going to do is just put a drop of Zappa Gap on there. My favorite part of the fly next is the deer hair. And we want to keep our white deer hair kind of on the bottom of the hook. And I'm going to take one bunch of white deer hair, kind of hold it just like that, take this thread, go all the way around the hook, and then follow it up with a couple of nice tight wraps. And the whole time with my left hand, I'm holding that deer hair where I want to. I don't want that deer hair to spread all the way around the shank of the hook and just kind of repeat the process on this side. You can see some of my white deer hair has kind of migrated up to the top. If you just take it, you just kind of push it to the side a little bit. Now we're going to go to the olive deer hair. We're going to tie that in right on top. And with my left hand, I'm just going to hold on to that deer hair bring my, kind of wiggle my thread up through that white hair. A couple of good tight wraps of thread. And I got my, the beginnings of my olive back. Okay, now with your right hand, just take 
your thumb and your forefinger and just kind of push everything back. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the white hair with this olive because I'm going to put a little spot of chartreuse right there. So you just kind of spread it out. Take my chartreuse, a couple of wraps of thread. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just with my left hand try and find that spot where we super glued earlier and just kind of hold that and steady that spot. And with my right hand I'm just going to push straight back with that hair and really, really press it back. And what I'm going to do is bring my thread straight up towards the eye like that and wrap. Just try and get your thread right back up against that hair. Now from here on out it's just kind of a, a repeating process of what we just did. This is our last bunch of hair that we're going to be tying in. We're plenty close to the eye of the hook and don't want to crowd it. All right, now we're ready for the trimming. You just kind of square off this fly a little bit. Cut the sides first, flip it over, do the other side. Almost uh, fish head type shape. All right, that's pretty, pretty good. Let me trim that belly a little bit more so I don't block that gap of the hook. Now we're ready to put on our eyes. Make a nice little socket like this. The eyes won't have the tendency to fall off as much. What we're going to do is just put a drop of super glue right in that socket eye and just slip it right in there. And just press it in there and you can actually kind of press the deer hair up against that eye and some of that glue will kind of migrate around the eyeball and some of that deer hair will stick to the side of the eye. Uh, this is a great surface fly for large mouth and small mouth and pretty much anything that likes to eat other fish. Um, one of the best ways to fish this is a real slow retrieve. Um, if you're in a, any kind of current situation, just let it swing in the current nice and slow and those fish will use that lateral line and feel this fly moving through the water and, and uh, give it a shot, tie some up and go out and get them wet. I'm going to tie a double bunny. The hook on it uses a Dairiki 700 which is a 4 extra long streamer hook like TM Cove 93, 95, 94. I'm going to use like some 035 lead. If I could get heavier lead I'd probably use it. We got that on. Then the next thing we need to do is we need to use some rabbit. So we got a white strip which will be the belly and a dark strip that will be the back. You need to get this on the hook. A couple ways you can do it. You could actually poke, pop the hook out of the vise and impel it, thread it like a worm. A lot of people have a little hole punch line around the house. So I'll just use that and I'll actually punch a hole. The thread is not the size thread is not super critical on this fly. I usually use something in the kind of that three aught to A size range. This is in Wapsie 280 denier. I mean, A monocord, flat wax nylon. And let's set that down there. And it's time to play with glue. I'm going to lightly coat the rabbit hide. So I'm going to grab the white belly strip here. And to prevent it from prevent getting too much glue on the hair itself, you want to hold this taut. If it's loose, you have no control over this. When you hold it tight, it's almost got like a rigid, it's almost like a rigid surface, you know. You can actually move it around. If it's like this, it's kind of hard to make it put on there evenly. Just pull this down. Just lightly coat the belly. And then let's do the dart back. Here again, if you hold it tight. Just grab the dark strip and the light strip. Kind of get them lined up. Then lightly press them again. This is the other advantage of this stuff over Bartsman. If I'm real quick, I can still get it apart. So just lightly align it. Press it together. That looks like that actually looks pretty good to you. Then you can get me and come in and pinch it hard. Take your scissors and almost use them like a knife. Slip them through so it's basically a hide. Comes to just the you know, the distance of the, of the two pieces of hide. Go through there and then actually you want to use the butts of your scissors to kind of cut it. The next thing I want to do is I want to kind of tape the tail a little bit. So I actually go down. This side's pretty aligned up. So I come down on this side. My scissors and have them barely open. Put in some flash. If you take it, you kind of roll it and twist it 
about where you're going to tie it in. You know, stiffens it up slightly there, but it kind of compacts the fibers together. We're pretty much done with thread. There's a variety of ways to finish off the fly. I'm going to put some eyes on it. What we'll do is we'll do my, my cheetah epoxy head. We'll do the, uh, the heart-shaped pony beads here. So what I want to do first, before I glue this on, before I cut my thread, let's try and see if this will slide on. And these are called heart-shaped pony beads. I mean, they're at craft stores. Uh, I think pony bead is just the style of beads that have this oversized hole in them. That yeah, looks pretty good there. Just do the install whip finish by hand. It's probably my favorite super glue, this quick tight by lock tight. Let me slip that on before this gets uh, set up. And we can put on some stick on eyes. What color do we want here today? But basically, when you stick on those eyes, it's kind of funny. This goes from a chunk of fur to like a little living entity. Resurrected back to life in bunny mode. It definitely gives it a fair amount of realism, you know, and maybe the eyeballs are for me, but if you feel more confident in the fly, there's nothing wrong with that. You fish it a lot harder. That's your basic double bunny with a using a bead head on heart shaped bead head, which is this is a real simple way to do that. And that's probably my favorite <clears throat> general purpose color, that white chinchilla looks like a lot of things. This part of the world could be a little Shad, you know, a place where you're fishing for bass. Could be a mullet in salt water. But there's your basic double bunny there. So what I have here, it's a rabbit hide I coated with a silicone caulking. It's a pretty thin layer, and that actually gives it enough body that the hook won't pull out. And so I put the glitter on there, but the trick with putting on the glitter is make sure you put it on last. If you put it on at the same time that you're putting the silicone on, before you spread it, it'll turn into like, like concrete will ball up. But also that silicone actually adds a little bit of uh, durability to it. I just take and snip this a little bit with my scissors to make it the width I want. Steelhead, salmon hook, this Dairiki 8.99, Champco 79.99. I'm just gonna put this in the vise upside down to start out with. I'm gonna put a drop of super glue. I'm gonna use some bright colored thread. There's some like flat wax nylon and fluorescent orange. I'm gonna actually push that bunny strip right inside the cone. I mean, another thing you could do is use some bright chenille or some bright dubbing right there. Uh, for all intents and purposes, that fly's pretty much done. And some of the, it's called perfect round rubber. This kind of looks kind of like silicone rubber, but the cool thing about it is it doesn't break like silicone rubber. I mean, regular silicone rubber can break while you're casting it. You just kind of fold that around. Uh, let's put three on the other side. It'll make it unsymmetrical. Kind of fold it around. You can build that up so we can certainly put some dubbing or something in there. The thread kind of build up like that will work fine, though. Finish. Put a drop of glue there. Now it's time to assemble the hide part. I want to set this in here and just kind of come back a little bit, but it should kind of have a little resistance after you pop it in. If you make a mistake, you can pop it back out. But it's just so there's low resistance to get it down. You can vary the weedlessness of it by you know, how far you run the hook point up in it or how far down you have it, how far you push it down. But I mean, pretty simple fly, but it works. I mean, that color chartreuse is good. I oh, good plastic colors, black, obviously. You know, black with maybe a little purple fleck, some other kind of groovy color. 